it's an aircraft that was never supposed to be, and yet it is flying around. Let's find out why, right after the drop. Hello and welcome to a new episode of Review, where we today will take a closer look at an Airbus A380 of all Nippon Airways that is in a white box. It doesn't really tell us anything about who has made it, but the model is identical to what is sold from a and Precision models. The backside is also not very revealing, still it is way better than what HAPA currently is offering. Before we get too far into today's review, it is worth mentioning that this aircraft model does come with a stand. And here she is, the Airbus A380 of a a in one of the three flying Honu liveries, in this case the emerald green livery representing the Hawaiian Ocean. a a was actually never supposed to have any A380s in their fleet, as a a never had placed an order for the type. Skymark, a Japanese low-cost airline, had originally placed an order for six A380s, but had to file for bankruptcy protection in 2015 before the order could be fulfilled. In Skymark's attempt to restructure the company, various plans on how this could be achieved were brought forth by Skymark and its creditors. Among those creditors was Airbus that ultimately supported a proposal backed by a a which included the condition for a a to purchase Airbus aircraft, and so later in 2015 a a announced an order for three A380s. So now let us take a closer look at the aircraft model itself to see what it has to offer. And we start off with the tail section where we on the vertical stabilizer have the ANA branding. We do also have a little bit of printed detailing on the horizontal stabilizer. And on the fuselage we then find the Japanese flag, the ANA branding, including the company slogan, Inspiration of Japan, and the full registration code of the aircraft. At the top of the fuselage we then have the little set dome. And at the very tail of the aircraft we also find a little bit of detailing around the APU exhaust. Then at the front of the aircraft and following the sea turtles across the fuselage, which are colored differently on each aircraft and also have their individual face, we find the Star Alliance logo and the aircraft type specification. Then we also have loads of static ports, sensors and markings around the cockpit section. That's really lovely. And of course also the cockpit windows and window wipers have been printed on. The engine cells have been kept in all white, but have the silver leading edge and the Rolls-Royce branding printed on. I do quite like the shape of the nacelles, but the overall quality and especially physical detailing of the engines I think we have seen better with other manufacturers. This is also the case when we look into the engines from the front, where we can see the engine fan blades. Then we can also take a quick look at the wing starting off with the top side where we have the different flaps, slats the spoilers carved out quite nicely. We have various printed details such as the markings as to where to walk on the wing or the full registration code. If we look at the underside I think that does also look quite nice here. We also find the full registration code once again. And then of course we also have the wingtip fences and also here I would say yeah that does look quite decent. The landing gear for me is a little bit of a mixed bag. If you don't get too close to it, it looks just fine. But if you take a closer look at some of the wheel sets, you see that the finishing isn't quite as good as, for example, with Harper. Nonetheless, we have some nice printed details on the front landing gear, which I am, of course, always very happy about. On the belly of the aircraft, we then find the a a branding and the company slogan. And while we do have a stand which matches the hole in the fuselage, I would have preferred not to have the hole or stand and just have the detail on obstructed. All right, and then last but not least, we also have the doors to the cargo compartments printed on here in the back side of the aircraft and here at the front of the aircraft. And there we have it, the Airbus A380 of all Nippon Airways in the emerald green livery. And what can we say about this aircraft model? What we absolutely need to mention about this model is the fact that it is entirely made out of plastic. It's a absolute lightweight when it comes to A380s. It's probably also fair to say that this model does not have its biggest strength with its physical detailing. I'm particularly here thinking about the landing gear, the engines or the horizontal stabilizer, where I would say the angle is a little bit off. But it doesn't mean that the model is bad, it just means that maybe other manufacturers have a better finish here. Nonetheless, I don't think anyone would buy the model because of particular good physical detailing, but because of the livery. 
And here is where all the cards are playing into the strength of this model because the print quality is really, really good. In the end, if you are like me and like aircraft models with a lovely backstory, then I would say yes, this aircraft model is absolutely worth having in one's collection. Now with that, we have reached the end of today's episode. If you have enjoyed the video, then don't forget to leave a like. That would be very much appreciated. And of course, if you are new around here, why not hit subscribe? That would be absolutely awesome. With that, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you soon again. I'm checking out and bye.